by following that trail of historians' footnotes, Windshuttle uncovers damning evidence of fudged figures and exaggerated claims. Well, in some cases, um, there are claims by the historians I'm criticising that can be shown to be absolutely false. Um, people who were supposed to be on the spot were, were somewhere else. Um, and there are other cases where historians... Um, Lyndall Ryan has made a, a whole range of claims um, about events that happened and she's given footnotes to them as historians are supposed to do and when you look up the footnotes you find there's nothing there. There are a couple of references uh, missing but they are readily found in the archives and can be checked and he's chosen not to do that. Lyndall Ryan cites the diary of the colony's first chaplain, the Reverend Robert Knopwood, as the source for her claim that between 1804 and 1808 the colonists killed 100 Aborigines. The diaries however record only four Aborigines being killed in this period. It's a devastating Ryan claim Ryan cannot refute. Right. I certainly agree that the Knopwood diaries say that, but I also had another reference referring to a report by John Oxley, who was a surveyor. He said too many Aborigines were being killed. OK, but how did you extrapolate from his words saying too many Aborigines had been killed to about 100 lost their lives? Well, Is I think by the up? way in which... Uh, Oxley wrote that he seemed to think there had been a great loss of life from the Aborigines. So in a sense, is it fair enough for him to say that you, you did make up figures? You're telling me you made an yes, estimated guess. Yes, but are always making up figures. It was here in Risdon Cove in 1804 that the first recorded shots were fired at Aboriginals by British soldiers. What happened here that day has become a seminal event in Tasmanian history. But according to Keith Windshuttle, the interpretation of events here in 1804 and others like it are central to how Aboriginal history in this country has been fabricated. At Riston Cove, um, all the evidence at the time is that they were on the spot by people who were there, say there were either two Aborigines or three Aborigines killed. It wasn't until 26 years later, um, that people came along and said, oh, no, I think there might have been 50 killed. And if you look at the person who said that, um, he wasn't there at the time. I don't know what happened at Risdon Cove. Something happened. I myself would choose not to talk about there being a massacre there. But to say that people who do say there was a massacre there are engaged in deliberate falsing, falsehoods and fabrication is just a beat-up. Yet, based on the accepted premise there was a massacre at Risdon Cove, the Tasmanian government handed back land there to the Aboriginals in 1995 as a gesture of reconciliation. This historic site of first British settlement, where the Union Jack first flew in 1803, now sits virtually unused and unkempt. The archaeological heritage of several of the first huts now overgrown or decaying.